Everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast, presented by HypeBot.com. Uh, I am your host, Michael Brandvold, and usually I have a co-host, Jay Gilbert, but he is traveling today, so I'm flying solo. Um, today, I want to welcome a special guest. I have Amanda Byers, who is the Managing Director of TuneFind, TuneFind.com, is joining me today. Amanda, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. So um, why don't you give us the, you know, the two minute spiel background bio, who you are and how you got to where you are right now. Sure. So I run TuneFind.com, um, which is the top website to track TV and movie soundtracks. And we've been around since about 2005, um, kind of one of the first sites to do this in the space. And really, this whole thing started as a fan site. Um, our founder, a good friend of mine, um, was sitting on his couch one day watching the TV show Scrubs. And he heard a song in the background of the scene, didn't know what it was. And really wanted to find it. <laughs> he went out um, being kind of a tech guy um, in the tech boom. He said that the Internet should have this. <laughs> right. Went out and tried to find it um, and couldn't find anything and actually couldn't find any great sites out there looking at this problem. So as a side gig, he set up this website. Um, a little fun project over the weekend, put it out there. He's like, I can't be the only one having this problem. <laughs> this has got to be a thing. Um, and very soon after started finding this whole community of people with the same exact problem. And as I said, you know, good friend of mine, I, I came into this, you know, sort of being one of those people with the same exact problem. He talked to me about the problem and I was like, I have that every day. The OC is awesome. It's got all this great music. <laughs> and, you know, they usually highlight a few of the artists at the end of the show, but there were a ton that weren't being highlighted. And so, I started the same way, kind of a side gig, um, talking with him and, and helping to build out that database in the early days. And now, 12 years later, um, the site gets over three and a half million visits a month. Um, so we're clearly not the only ones having this problem still. <laughs> um, and it's really turned into this you know, huge thriving community of people who really love to discover new music and have found a great venue to do that through these television shows and the movies that they love to watch. So a uh, big question is how, how do you source the, the information and the data? Is it, do you get it direct from um, the TV shows themselves? Do, do, can fans submit stuff? How's it work? Yeah, it's a real mix. Um, in the early days, it was, it was Matt sitting there <laughs> on his couch typing things in. Um, but very quickly, uh, we figured out that number one, there were other people who wanted to help contribute to this. So we started a crowdsourcing model um, and set up an algorithm that really looks at a user's accuracy over time. The more accurate you are as you submit information on the site and other view users vote that it's correct, then you accrue karma on the site. And so you become a power user and you can um, sort of uh, achieve different things and, and be able to take different actions on the site more quickly. So we do um, and, and have a long history of looking at crowdsourcing to find that data. The networks do put out um, a fair bit of information for some shows on some networks. So, you know, the very music driven shows will put out some listings. But then we discovered again, <laughs> you know, being being fans but not being in the industry we discovered that gosh there are professionals whose job it is to select this right. music music supervisors <laughs> exactly and so we started connecting up with the music supervisors and working directly with them to get authoritative data straight from the source so we have relationships with about um 40 45 or so music supervisors who work with us either to submit the information directly to us or to clean up what users have submitted. They'll go in and go, oh, yeah, that's correct. Or, oh, no, this was the acoustic version of this song. <laughs> it actually needs to be this one. Um, answer fan questions. Let us know about the unreleased stuff that's a lot harder to track down. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and we've been able to engage with them. And then that's been you know, really wonderful. Are, are artists able to submit themselves as, as an authority? Because... You know, I've worked I've worked with artists who a lot of times they'll get placed, but it's 
not through a music supervisor or anything like that, but I think it would be great if the artist could come in here and go, hey, let me let me tell you, here's where I'm going to be. Yeah, absolutely. Artists can absolutely submit things on the site. And we actually have a fair number of artists who are active on the site and engaging with fans because it's also a another way for them to connect with some of the fans who are responding to that music. We have uh, Q&A forums on the site. So they'll say, God, I really love this song. And, and an artist can come in and be like, oh, awesome. So glad you love it. Come check me out. Um, and again, it, it, we see artists doing that, but we also see like sync reps, management, other um, artist reps out there, you know, helping to make sure that their sync placements are highlighted on TuneFind because we are typically one of the first websites to come up. If anyone searches for Grey's Anatomy music, you know, we, we come up first. So if you want to make sure that you're really taking advantage of that sync opportunity and connecting with those fans in that moment, you want to be on TuneFind. Now, I know just as a fan, besides TV shows and movies, I'm finding a lot of times I'm going, who is that in this TV commercial? Are you tracking mm -hmm. commercials as well? We don't currently. You know, um, a lot of folks would love for us to do this, and we're trying to figure out a way to do it that's nice and clean. Um, when we started out, there were some websites out there that were already doing this, and so we didn't want to step in that space. And now those websites are starting to sort of fall away, and we're getting a lot more pressure to try and bring commercials into the TuneFind database as well because people want that one comprehensive source, too, even – the folks, the industry professionals look at it and they go, they want to know, okay, where was this song used across all these different medium? So I, it's something that we're looking at and it's just, we haven't quite figured out the best clean way to do is, it. Is, is, is there, is there a technical issue that's, that's in the way of it? Is there something that's a little more difficult dealing with commercials as opposed to TV and movie? Yeah. So um, with commercials, you have a lot more regionalism. So there might okay. be... Yep. Uh, particular, and we have a very global user base. Um, we ca we cover almost 900 television shows now, and about 200 of those uh, 200 of those are actively airing um, in the U.S., the U.K., Canada, Australia. And so, when you start to look at regional differences in commercials. It becomes a little harder to say, okay, this is definitely the song that played because someone might confuse it with a different version that was playing in their country. Sure. So we have to figure out how to just make it really obvious since we do rely on that crowdsourcing model. Okay, how do we make this super obvious for a user so that they don't get confused and mismatch um, right. what the content is? And um, and that's been our, our holdup there. But one another area that I think we'll be moving into soon is probably video games. I was just going to um, ask you about that because, again, I've got one of my clients is Greg Kinn, and he's had music placed in Grand Theft Auto. So it's yep. it's like, okay, you know, it would be great to be able to go find a source of go, whose music is in this video game that I'm listening to, who, who scored it. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really um, powerful and, and for us a really simple way um, to to get another big swath of coverage of, of really meaningful syncs for artists and meaningful music uses that that are absolutely things that people are searching for. Now, do do music supervisors use this for research as well as just providing you information are they coming to you to go all right you know i do need a song let me go see what's available i liked what was on this other show and i want something like that or i want to know who it is so i'll tell you the number one use case that music supervisors have and they are hilarious when they tell me this is they're on the site every day because they think oh i'd love to use xyz song I'm just going to go check and see where else it's been used. <laughs> I want to know if it's, you know, just been used in a show recently or had a big So from a competitive and... advantage, they, they're, they're looking at it like, I don't want, if, if it's been used all over the place in the last year, I don't want to touch it. Well, yes and no. I mean, it depends on the use and it depends on, you know, what's, what the scenario is, but for some of them, they maybe don't want something that has become so associated with one particular scene that it's not, that it's going to remind people of that show. 
well, right. <laughs> well, someone's watching there. So they might, you know, just look at the landscape. Now, I'll tell you, that hasn't stopped anybody from using Kaleo's Way Down We Go <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> so for sure, folks aren't eliminating things based on popular use, but they might think, a little bit about, okay, this is how it's been featured in the past. Does that have an impact on how I'm going to use it? How can, is there a use for artists to use TuneFind who haven't got music placed? Yes. Oh my gosh. This is, um, I think, one of my biggest tips for artists looking to break into sync. Music supervisors are a small and very overworked group. <laughs> they are um, inundated and they have to be masters of a million different genres and be able to source really interesting creative music um, from across the spectrum. So they've got to know a lot of stuff, but they're getting inundated with artists submitting things to them all the time. And one of the great tips that some of the music supervisors that we work with um, will give is actually, hey, look, if you want to pitch me, great, I want that new music. But know what I'm working on. Know what my projects are. Know what kind of music I'm using on them. And when you pitch me, when you send me that email with the link to the two songs that you really want to highlight out of your whole <laughs> collection, tell me, this one would be great for this project, for this character. This is very similar to how you've used this kind of music on this show. Then it tells the supervisor, A, that you've done your homework. You know what they're using. You know what they're looking for. And it gives them that um, instant connection with a project that, that is useful to, to them as they're you know, wading through the hundreds of emails they get every week. So on, on TuneFind, do you list who the music supervisor is for a particular track, a particular placement, a particular song? Yeah, so we list music supervisors by project. So if they are the music supervisor for Grey's Anatomy or Ray Donovan or Stranger Things, then we list, and, and if we work with them already, so if you see them listed on TuneFind, then they're someone that we work with. Um and so you'll see it right on every page for that show. So every season page, every episode page where we list out all the songs, you'll see right on the side, music supervisor, Nora Felder. And if you click on that, you'll get Nora Felder's page, which shows you all of the projects that she works on on TuneFind, plus her links off to Twitter or um, That's what I was going to ask. So you IMDb. actually will, you'll provide links that can help in actually – contacting so if if you're well if it's you, up to the music suit if the music it's up to the supervisor, supervisor right. wants to yeah. give you that but but even if you've got their name you could obviously go out there and start yeah. googling it and searching for them so if you can't figure out who they are from that <laughs> yeah so so actually for unsigned artists artists who have never been placed this is a a a really good all-in-one place resource for tracking down music supervisors and what they've worked on and what they like and what they listen to. Yeah. So you can work at it from kind of two angles. You might be watching a show and go, man, that this sound is really aligned with my sound. You know, maybe this show is, a, is one to pitch and I'm going to go out and research who works on this show and who I should talk to for this show. But the other flip way to think about it is, okay, who are other artists that have a similar sound to mine? Um, and you can go on TuneFind and search for an artist as well. And you can see everywhere that their music has been placed. And if you're like, oh, you know, I, my sound is sort of similar to Coldplay, but I'm a much cheaper version of, than Coldplay. Oh, a sound alike. I'm a sound alike. <laughs> well, you know, I'm not even, you know, like I have the same aesthetic as right. as as Coldplay, but, you know, Coldplay is expensive to license and I'm not going to be that expensive. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> but here, you know, here's their sound and where the types of shows where they've uh, had their songs appear, you know, here's a whole listing here. These are possible places where my music might be of interest and you can right. go out and, and see those and, and cross-reference it back. Have so, you thought about allowing people to submit music having tune find become a submission service we have um 
Yeah, it's interesting. Um, that would open up a whole other, um, a whole other interesting category for us. Um, and I think, I think there's definitely, you know, it's piqued our interest, but, um, but it would be a big step for us. So we'd, we'd want to figure out if that makes sense for us. Sure. Sure. It just, it just seems like you, you've already got the connections to the music supervisors and they're coming to you to, to get information. Um, there might be a, a business model to bring music to these supervisors that you're already in touch with. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, from a fan standpoint, um, talk about the music discovery that can happen on TuneFind. Yeah, absolutely. You know, for us, like I said, this is, you know, absolutely in our DNA because we are not from the industry, we, we're literally those same fans, <laughs> those same fans out there trying to answer that question of, gosh, who the heck is this and why can I not get their song? Um, so for us, that really drives the vast majority of, of how we think about the, the public facing site and, and how people interact with it. So we try and make it super simple. You know, each episode has a page and it lists the songs and hopefully list them right in order and people can drag and drop and put them in the order that they appear and put a scene description in so you can know that's exactly the song I was looking for. Um, and for us, we we really want people to be able to, to go in and find that song from that scene that they were looking for, but also be able to look over on the side and gosh, here are a bunch of the other popular songs from this show. I already love this show. And I like some of the music on it. Here are some other things that are popular. And so we try and highlight that. And then we also track um, on a weekly basis, we track whatever the top songs are across all of TuneFind. Um, so we know what are the... And is that based on what? Search results? Uh, it's based on user click-throughs um, on our site. So if they get to a song and they decide they want to go off to Apple Music or Amazon or wherever and buy it, um, okay. we, we, we track all of that. And, um, and so we have, we have a couple of different charts that we do and we'll track what's trending right now. So with a quick look back, what's the stuff that's spiking up in popularity in the last two days? Um, because people are watch a particular show and are super excited about it or a new movie has been released. Power Rangers came out and whew, <laughs> We saw a big spike in interest from um, from viewers of Power Rangers, and then we track weekly what's been the top um, top songs for users over the past week, and then monthly. And we actually um, we are now partners with the Hollywood Reporter and Billboard to run their top TV music chart that they oh, do okay. monthly. That's great. Yeah, so we com they combine our data um, sort of as the authoritative source of all the, the different things that have taken place in that month and um, the most popular ones. Then they pull in the streaming and um, Shazam tagging data um, to figure out which ones have actually translated into commercial sales. If getting your song on TV has actually translated into people going out and buying your album or buying that song. How is Tune Find a mobile app as well? No, we're mobile friendly website. So okay. if people are using it on the um, on their phones, and the vast majority of our users are using it on their phones. So we use it uh, in still a, a web based format. Okay. So what what does the future hold for Tune Find? I mean, we we've talked about you know interesting things that you could do, but what are you what can you actually talk about that's down the road for Tune Find right now? Yeah. So, um, a couple of big things. So one of, one of the biggest things is really more better data. Um, we have really done a lot of work over the last couple of years to streamline a lot of the back end things to allow us to have more shows with more episodes <laughs> airing all over the place and being able to get that data into the site, um, cleanly. Um, we really want to grow our movie coverage. There's been this massive change in, how movies are soundtracked. There's so much more music. There aren't as many of those, you know, various artists soundtracks coming well, yeah, out. I was, was going to ask you that, you know, it, 
there had there's definitely been a change in that it's it's not soundtracks yeah. filled with great name artist it's somebody who scored the entire movie and are you tracking who just scores the music background so we do both um what we noticed i mean when we first started out the site it seemed like there were still there was still a strong tradition of doing a soundtrack that was maybe a mix various artists you know commercial music plus some score from the from the movie and you get that album and it'd be a mix of the kind of the best, the, the, the greatest hits of that movie. And then, um, with the dawn of the streaming and individual track purchase, it feels like those various artists albums are not happening as much as before. Um, so you're just getting those score albums because that's the stuff that hasn't been released yet somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and you're getting a lot more of the commercial music used. So before there might have been, you know, 10 tracks or something. Now there, we regularly have movies that have over 50 tracks in a movie. And you're not going to put that out on an album. Right. <laughs> you're not going to be able to get that. So we are really trying to expand our movie coverage. We're adding one to two new movies per day um, on the site. And I'd like to see us ramp that up um, considerably because there's a huge back catalog um, of movies that, that we can fill in as well. Um, so we're, we're definitely focused on that and we're really focused on getting more people in there with that authoritative data, getting more music supervisors working with us and more artists working with us and using the site as a way to kind of highlight their, um, their syncs and take it to that next level. I mean, when you get this sync, it might be this perfect, beautiful moment that you have to grab as an right. artist. You've got 30 seconds of, <laughs> of your music playing in there. And if it's that great, clean, beautiful 30 seconds where someone can listen to it and, and get really excited about it, you got to grab that. And, and it kills me because every single week we have probably three or four artists who miss out on that opportunity. And we have people on our site who are like, who is this? Why can't we find this song? Why haven't they released it? And, you know, we really want artists to know that they're, they're missing this chance. Right. <laughs> and those, those people are not going to come back in three months when you finally release that song. Like they're gone. Right, They've moved right. on to something else. It was the moment. Yeah. So we, um, we really want artists to understand that this is a powerful moment and, and we've got this platform. People are here, like come and, and, and connect with your people. Right. Right. <laughs> they, they are your fans. They just don't know it yet. You have, you have to tell them who you right. are and, and, you know, get them to your music. So building out our artist pages and really, you know, making them a great focal point. I mean, now, our artist pages for um, artists who have that available um, have, you know, great high quality image at the top of the artist. And, you know, we're looking to add in their Twitter handles and website links and all of that sort of thing to really make it a, a, a great place for an artist to showcase their sure. sync work um, sure. and, and get those fans to connect back to them directly. And, and, how can artists claim their artist page on TuneFind? Yeah, so um, the the easiest way to do it is to to reach out to us, um, info at TuneFind.com. We have a lot of automated things in place to pull in that information from other sources, and we can tell them how to make sure that their profile is complete um, in those places so that everything comes together on our site. And and perfectly. once once they claim their profile, will that also allow them to submit information at that point in time too? So they can submit information anytime. Okay. Um, and I will, the, that information still does go through a verification process um, just because we need to make sure that an artist isn't randomly submitting stuff on a show that they'd like to get exposure sure. on, but... <laughs> but don't, um, don't actually have a sync. And we have had cases of that where artists have been eager to get on a show, so they try and list their music there. And it's like, oh, no, wait, that's not how it works. <laughs> um, but uh, our verification, the verification process is very streamlined and, and tends to move very quickly because we have such a huge artist, um, huge user community that's out there and 
um, looking to verify that um, okay. that information. But that's pretty fast. Um, and uh, the website obviously is tunefine.com. It is tunefine.com. Awesome. Amanda, this was great. This, the, you know, uh, this is really informative, especially the 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 tips you provided on how unsigned artists can go out there and um, research the music supervisors and and connect with them. Yeah, it just makes it so much more effective when you finally do reach out to them. If you can show you've done your homework, they respect that so much yeah. more than you know the the cold email that's uninformed and, and not targeted. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Thank you so much, Amanda. This was great. Thanks so much for having me. Take care. So I want to thank Amanda. That was a great interview. Um, unfortunately, Jay couldn't be with us this week. Like I said, he's traveling, doing a little business out in the East coast. Um, I do want to reiterate that, um, the tips Amanda gave us about, uh, bands going and tracking down the supervisors on TuneFine. Awesome. Um, tracking down and finding music supervisors is the number one thing I get asked by a lot of musicians. How do I find them? How do I submit my music? So the fact that you could go to tunefind.com and, and track down some of these supervisors is, uh, is a great resource. So out and if, if you're an artist that's already got music that's been placed, make sure you go claim your artist page on TuneFind as well. Um, even though Jay's not here this week, I want to throw out a, another you need help with your online strategy. So this week, if your social media post is five words and it contains three dozen hashtags, you need help with your online strategy. And why do you need help? Because people are not going to read a post that's five words and 36 hashtags. Those hashtags are going to overwhelm people. They're not going to pay attention to it. You also need to think about where you're posting. Hashtags are huge on Instagram. But you're not going to get away with 36 hashtags on Twitter. you got 140 characters. Think about it. Facebook, same thing. Facebook is not something where you just start hashtagging every word in your post. It looks terrible. Don't do it. Think about the readability of your post. You want people to read the post, not all these hashtags. I think probably what's happening when people do this is they're just being lazy and they're posting on Instagram and then telling Instagram to post it to Facebook, Twitter, and everywhere else. But don't get caught up in that game. That's it. Till next week, Music Biz Weekly Podcast. We're out of here.